It's 11 o'clock in the morning, and I'm suddenly aware of this buzzing, pulsating noise, a bit like a distant drill or angle grinder. But it's not just a noise. It feels like my inner ear is vibrating. That was my first experience of the hum. After that, I started noticing it most days, although it wasn't there all the time. At first I thought it was neighbours getting work done on their houses, but then I started noticing it some nights as well. I tried unplugging the Wi-Fi, the fridge, turning the electricity supply off, but it was still there. My husband started calling me electro-hypersensitivity girl. He couldn't hear it. Then I started Googling strange hum in North Bristol, and that's when I discovered this thing called the Bristol Hum. Barely perceptible, very, very low, bassy, rumbling and pulsating hum. A diesel engine idling, uh, like a lorry ticking over or something like that. The first reports of the Bristol Hum started in the late 70s. Power lines, industrial fans at nearby Avonmouth, and the recently constructed M32 motorway all came under suspicion. If you had to put your money anywhere, where would it be for the source of this noise? I would say it's probably an industrial source of, of, some, of some description, and whether we locate it precisely remains to be seen. But there have been recent reports too. I don't hear this hum every day, uh, or every night, but when I do, it, suddenly, it doesn't suddenly start. It comes in very slowly and I'm suddenly aware of it. James Dunn is a Bristol resident who first started hearing the hum in 2009. What started initially as an irritation is starting to become more of an irritation because when I notice it when I'm trying to get to sleep, I hear it. And because of the way it pulsates, I, I really, really hear it and notice it and that has stopped me from getting to sleep. Uh, I can hear it at the front of the house and the back of the house and I can hear it outside as well, but only at night, possibly because of less background noise. I've never heard this hum anywhere else in the UK other than in Bristol. I have tried to record it myself to see if I could send it to anyone. I've walked around outside trying to pinpoint its location, but I can't find the direction of the sound. It appears to be completely omnipresent. I firmly believe it's an outside source. But where it is, I don't know. Or what it is, I certainly don't know. But Bristol isn't the only place that's afflicted by strange noises. The standard narrative is that in the mid to late 60s in England, and particularly the city of Bristol and the city of Lard, Scotland, there was an explosion of interest and commentary surrounding it. And then in the United States, we see similar reports, uh, particularly in Towski, Mexico, and Kokomo, Indiana, and Hueytown, Alabama, and those sorts, of, uh, those sorts of places. Glenn McPherson established the World Hum Map and Database in 2012 after noticing a strange droning sound, particularly at night, at his home near Vancouver, Canada. Um, the timeline is actually crucial um, as it uh, gives guidance to the theoretical side of things. Tinnitus, or tinnitus as it's also pronounced, um, is documented throughout human history. The world hum is not. And if in fact the uh, timeline is correct, and I'm not convinced it is, but if the timeline, the current timeline is correct, then that rules out an, an, any sort of internal mechanism. There's nothing new in human anatomy, absolutely nothing. But there is a lot that's new about human technology. The strange thing about my experience of the Bristol Hum is that soon after I started investigating it, it disappeared. Possibly I was hearing it because last winter I had a string of colds and sinus problems. Or maybe the hum just stopped. I'm going to meet Jake Cole, who lives in a different area of Bristol and claims he can hear a hum. I'm curious to know if I'll be able to hear it too. I first heard the hum um, 15 years ago. It sounds to me the sound of a, of, of a, of a speaker with the volumes being left up, but um, there's no music playing. The hum that comes from that, that's the sound it is to me. What can you hear now? Right now I can, yeah, I can hear the road. You know, I can hear my clock ticking, 
I can my fridge buzz in. But uh, you know, I, I, just, I don't hear any electrical buzzing right now. Except a bit. <laughs> I can actually hear it now. You can. Yeah. Can you hear it, Linda? I can hear something in yeah. your house. It's like a kind of very low rumbling sound, like... Mm. Which is different to what I've heard in my house. My, when I hear it in my house, it's more like a kind of... It's, it's annoying that I don't know what it is. And I've often wondered if I knew what the source of the sound was, would I be able to um, sort of make peace with the sound and just zone out almost and go to sleep. For some people, these hums are more than a curiosity. They're a serious annoyance. But although local authorities have a duty to investigate noise complaints, they're often at a loss when it comes to these kind of low frequency noises. If you're lucky, they will send an acoustician to try and get to the bottom of it. Someone like Andy Morehouse from the University of Salford. We did a research study on um low frequency sound cases and there, there we looked at um, we had 10 case studies so people who complained about a noise in about a third of our cases there was some external environmental noise that correlated with what the what the person was complaining about um, in about a third of cases there was no correlation at all so it could have been perhaps an internal sound or we don't really know but it certainly wasn't something that was external and then there was a th another third where we, we really couldn't work it out one way or the other. So they were kind of uncertain. So regarding the Bristol hum, it's very difficult to imagine a, a physical source of noise that would be the same over large areas of the city uh, because noise sources tend to be sort of point-like and as the sound spreads out, it, it becomes weaker. So if it could be heard all over the city, then there must be a very strong source somewhere. So you would expect to be able to find that source. So I think it's more likely that people are hearing different things uh, and because the, the description of low frequency sound tends to be rather imprecise, we don't have good, really good vocabulary for those kind of sounds. Um, so they might hear about other people having something that sounds like it's the same experience and, and attribute it to the same source. Whereas in fact, I, I think it's unlikely that there is a single source. So in at least some cases, there is a genuine external source of the noise even if not everyone can hear it. But what about those where an environmental source can't be found? Tim Husband is a Sheffield-based audiologist who has been investigating some of these cases. A somatosound is anything generated by the body, so it can be your digestion, it can be your musculoskeletal system, or your, your uh, blood pumping through your veins. People can sometimes interpret these sounds as um, a, a hum or a, a buzz, and a lot of that's down to trying to externalise the problem. You've noticed a new s signal in your environment and you're trying to rationalise that and explain it to yourself. And it feels a bit more comfortable very often to explain it as an external sound source rather than a, an internal one. When we are able to identify an external source of the sound, um, it can very easily be kind of the reverse of a somata sound case. So it can be that someone's got hyperacusis or an over response to normal signals in the environment. Hyperacusis comes about because of um, generally anxiety and stress um, and can be treated in a similar way to tinnitus. Uh, life events, um, changes in your global state of anxiety and arousal, um, changes in your belief about the signal can make your brain very successfully decide to filter this meaningless signal out. As far as it being inside or outside my own ears or my own head, um, I firmly believe that it is outside. Um, I've tried noise cancelling headphones with no music on, so just cancelling out all the background noise and it tends to go away. I've used earplugs and though less effective, it also tends to go away. So that's to me suggests that it is definitely not inside my own head, inside my own ears. If my body was interpreting the sound, surely I'd hear it wherever I went. You know, I've travelled quite extensively and, and stayed in lots of hotel rooms all over the world and I've never heard it there. And yeah, as soon as I come home, I hear it. 
But if Jake and James are picking up on something external, what could it be? French researchers recently concluded it may be caused by waves grinding against the ocean floor. But this explanation doesn't seem to account for why the hum only appears to have been around for a few decades. In 2004, geoscientist David Deming concluded that very low frequency radio waves were the likely culprit. A view shared by Glenn McPherson. The world's major military powers use VLF radio for communicating with submerged submarines. VLF radio can penetrate ocean water to a considerable depth and it's the mobile airborne based ones that Dr. Deming zeroed in on as being the likely source of what originally caused the hum in England permanently or um, circling um, airplanes trailing long VLF uh, antennae that are transmitting at these frequencies. If there's an energy in the environment um, being generated by the government or whoever it might be, it's energy, it can be measured. People tend to reach for explanations that feel comfortable to them, that meet their world expectations, but unfortunately it's quite easily testable. When my hum disappeared, I mostly felt relieved, although a little bit of me missed the whole mystery of it. Then, a month or so ago, it came back. Just for a couple of days, like the last time, I'd been suffering from a bad cold and I was feeling pretty stressed with work. So I can empathise with the view that it's something internal, like increased blood pressure in my ears that my brain is latching onto and misinterpreting. Except that I could hear Jake's hum when I visited his house and nothing in the quiet of my own home. Ditto, if the hum was something ubiquitous, surely I'd be able to hear it everywhere and it would sound the same not low and rumbling in one place, and higher and pulsating in another. Regardless of its source, all of this has got me thinking. The only time I seem to notice the hum and it bothers me is when I'm feeling run down or stressed. So in my case, maybe the hum is a kind of warning sign. It's my body's way of telling me to slow down and take better care of myself. In other words, it isn't something I should fear but something I should embrace.